Good evening, dear listeners, and welcome to a very delayed or very early episode of the Shout Song LARP Diaries. I'm your host, Chris, and I'm joined once again by my erstwhile friend, Matty. That's me. You might have noticed there's just me today. Yeah, We've got some news for you. Yeah, Sol is not dead. Sol is. Oh, <laughs> I was going to let it drag out for a little longer. <laughs> yeah, we can't. We can't be scaring people. Like, yeah, we've lost at least. I was about to say a third of the podcast, but really, he's half of the entertainment. With with you being the other yeah. half, of course. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was. Yeah. You know, lest we lose the second third of the podcast at that grievous insult. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> Math, oh, maths is not <laughs> what this podcast is about. <laughs> The uh, Matha song. Pod- anyway, <coughs> shut the fuck up, Chris. <laughs> Soul is out playing. Uh, Shatter Midler. some podcast. Sorry, I'm on it now. Shatter some, no, perfect. Shatter some podcast. <laughs> the Academy anyway, friendly yeah. version. Oh, actually, Soul is busy really doing fun things. Yeah, he's playing in a and tournament it's, for it's, the you know. Middle Earth strategy battle game. Um, yeah, and it's it's not like fans out there like we've it. had six months to do this where we could have arranged a time we were all free. But you know that's fine. Yeah, I think it's on brand. It, it it's on brand, but also not quite walk longest path part two energy. But we did give PD a little bit of shade for being a little bit, you know, the winds are still coming out, and we're less than a week away from the event. But on the flip Again. side, <laughs> we are releasing the episode four summary less than a week before E one. So we are quite literally our own worst enemy. Yeah, it's true. Yep. I don't know if I remember much. So we were looking through this, and I know I've I've looked through this document, which I think we must have filled out maybe a week or two after E4. I think it was pretty much immediate for me, because Sol put the document yeah. out, didn't fill it in. I did. You did it like a couple of days later, I think. The thing is, the thing is, I don't know what I'm talking about for half of it. And some of it I have vague recollect- recollections of. But, but but they are vague. <laughs> yeah, now it's we've taken it. some time to figure out what was going on. What I do remember is how warm it was. It was a yeah. It, it was, was a hot the one. fourth in four incredibly warm events. Yeah, last I don't think we had a, we had storms. Don't get me wrong, like you know, fucking. But only at the end. Lightning. At the end of each event, yeah, to balance out the weather. But otherwise, it was no. It gorgeous. literally was. It was boiling hot for every event, and then it rained or stormed on the Sunday of every event, from what I remember. Yep. There was a dust storm, I think, at E3. Do you remember we walked out to the car and it was just... It, the sky Is was... That, was that a dust storm? I that was when I was putting was. The, the... I was over somewhere. I yeah, had to get back and it was just going completely black. Yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah, E2 or something. The, yeah. Oh, God, so it was, was insane, purple, yeah. backlit with lightning watching this billowing clouds of dust and uh, almost like a like a smoke grenade just billowing over the car park and people running for cover. Great fun. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Would recommend as long as you don't have to enjoy the consequences <laughs> on the way home. Well, it was at E1 or E2 was the first time that they were like letting cars on early because of the... It was E1. Yeah, E1 last year. <sighs> started went... the trend, man. Yeah. They, I mean, I really hope that... I understand it. Like, it's a game. People need to get home and if the shit is going to hit the fan, fair enough. And how, like, people start packing up from midday sometimes anyway, so it's not really changing that much. But I've paid for We have my... time in and time out for a reason. <laughs> Precisely. I paid for my ticket, and if I'm role-playing, and I want to keep role-playing, I, I like to think I should be able to, um, without an SUV yeah. lattering through the walls of Senate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm pleased to report that hasn't happened yet. But I gotta yeah. say the times when I was in military council were the best because you're in, in the military council tent right up until three o'clock. Mm. So you come out and half the field is packed down, but you've been in the moment till then, so Definitely. And mm. unfortunately with only four events a year, you know you want to squeeze every last visceral second out of these. But yeah, anyway, should we actually talk about E four of twenty twenty three? And um, it would, it would more than 385 year of the empire. A week before That's we true. go into winter. Oh my god. It actually feels like winter for this winter, which is interesting. Yeah. All right, first thing up. Yeah, let's get the It was actually before time. <laughs> Shut up. 
Shut up. You have spent, dear listeners, <laughs> Christopher <laughs> don't, has spent, don't, please, I, I don't even know how long <laughs> trying to this, figure Matthew. out. I audacity. won't, but I will. <laughs> we'll think about it. That is such an empty threat. Yeah, it is. You'll never find it again. No. No. Okay. But we started, I can't remember how this came about. I think you or Sol mentioned to me that this had been talked about. The, that the Shattersong Diaries had been invited by the LARP noobs at the time um, to come and do, I think it was for charity, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a Christmas raffle that was a, yeah. sounded like a um, big success from what I saw, actually. So Good. this is done with the beauty of hindsight, but we got invited mm. to change our little podcast from an MP3 to an MP4. And we got taken <laughs> deep. Okay, I get it. <laughs> we got taken deep into the woods uh, by Ian, yeah. and Dave, and we did a little skit, uh, very similar to Anchorman, if you've ever seen that film, mm-hmm. where all the newscast, newcaster teams start fighting each other. We did the same um, as bunch usual. Of different podcasts. Yep. Who, who was of... there? There were so many that I kind of d- I didn't realize there were so many Empire podcasts. There was at least like four or five. Yeah, there was us, obviously LARP noobs, LARPs mm-hmm. and tarps, mm-hmm. um, the fighting spuds. Yeah, the the martial one. Yeah, and there then, was um... there was the two that couldn't be there who were represented by paddles. <laughs> it's hard to describe. You'll have to. I'm sure it's somewhere to view it. It's probably on the LARP it's, noobs it's... Facebook page and on YouTube. Yeah. It is there. Makes sense. It was good fun. Most of the stuff that we filmed didn't make it in, which is a shame because I spent probably a good five minutes, longer than it sounds, throwing myself to the ground in 25 degree heat in chainmail. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, we, we filmed that particular <laughs> leap from a grenade and it's like, nah, I'm not going to do that. And I'm literally <laughs> sat going, there with like twisted ribs. Where are the bloopers, noobs? Where are the bloopers? I want the behind the scenes cut. It could where be a 30 minute behind the scenes cut and I would watch it. Mm. There, it, was, it, was, it was a real laugh. It was good fun. It was a nice well, way to kick it off. Mm. And more about LARPs and TARPs later. Um, <laughs> because they, uh, I'll, I'll say it now. Yeah, no, it's not even foreshadowing. It's just four. There is no shadow. It's all in the clear, crisp daylight of what mm, I'm about to say. Actually, more against this. Yeah, is a, this is just fight. this is just shade. Oh damn it! It's a shadow again. They win <laughs> every turn. Anyway, the um, Wops and Tarps did a fantastic episode covering E4, and they talked about about a particular Cold Sun skirmish. We're going to talk about that as well, but we have an extremely different opinion as to what happened, and we're going to um. We're going to drop some... Set the record straight truth. is what we're going to do. That's it. I was about to make a truth social reference, but set the record straight is much less politically charged. Thank you, Matty. Sure. You're welcome. I'm always here for PR. You are. All right. We did that. We did Anchorman stuff. That was before time in. Mm-hmm. On That was like Friday midday-ish or something. Yeah. And uh, And there was some shopping. Which indeed. does actually bear mentioning. Normally we go straight into the time, but actually I bought myself a present. What kind of present, Matty? It was Did one it that goes pew, pew, wrapped pew. Up, <laughs> wrapped up in a little bow. <laughs> I get it. I like that. I like that. Um, yeah, I bought a bow from Anvil as well. I was walking around because the one that I was supposed to use was not available. And I, I think I'd been archering for about two three events three events you say yeah. okay three so i knew that i was like the loving it why oh, oh, oh it's <laughs> it is a shout off oh, okay right okay. it is anyway i promise not to swiftly on. that in post either <laughs> <laughs> moving swiftly swiftly on um I asked Chris to walk around so that I could get some bow buying advice just in case. And I remember there was one that I kind of liked. And then we walked into the other shop. I cannot, I can picture the tents and I never, ever remember the names of which tent is which. It's so I have no the, clue. It's the little lightning bolt one. It's, it's right at the edge of the old shopping parade. Yeah. Oh God, opposite Chow's. 
yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you yeah. mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They, they, yeah, exactly. And oh, anyway, I can't remember what it's called, but it was from that shop. It was really, really cool. It's a beautiful light wood bow. Um, yeah, gorgeous. Easy. Yeah, and they upsold recurve. me a bunch of arrows. <laughs> also yeah. easy because I needed those. I got a quiver as well. I got everything. I got a full Indeed. loadout. Yeah. And it was amazing. It's so cool. I've actually been talking to people... Uh, locally here to be like is there an archery club anywhere that i can join because <laughs> i love it so much so thanks laugh archery um well, did you buy anything um so soul bought something i wanted um because there were some really i've actually got a copy of what we saw in my shed at the moment so i do have this now but at this point i didn't i was fucking livid so they're these beautiful greaves i don't i, could, I don't know which company makes them but they appear in different shops everywhere they're, they're relatively um, common. Are they the ones with the knee joint? They are indeed. And they've got a little bit of elastic yeah. between the armor and then the leather strap. So you can do it just on the tight side of things, but you've got enough elastic to make it um, oh, that's good. comfortable. Yeah, and so it's not too tight or too loose. It's got exactly. a bit of a adjustability. And it's good medium leg armor mm. coverage. Because I've tried to mm -hmm. make my, you can make your own greaves, right? But then your upper leg is the place that just gets smacked in combat mm. most of the time in, in Empire. So you can wear a chain skirt or something, but... I was just going to say, do leather war skirts count as armour? It depends on the thickness of the leather. So if it's 3 mil plus, it's medium, and less than mm. that, it would be light. And it counts as coverage? Yeah, if, it's co if it covers you, it covers you. And yeah. if it's sprayed okay. silver, it counts as heavy. <laughs> you, you know exactly what you've done yeah that is that is still unrelease you can't refer to it no, <laughs> you can't make references episode, to unreleased. Binned, it is, <laughs> i didn't know yeah. you were binning it i still think you should put it out i have it's, no issue with putting those opinions out there yeah it's like a nuclear <laughs> launch code i don't intend to use it but i do have it yeah anyway so we found this beautiful set of greaves and i was ooing and ahhing i sold for uh, <laughs> Sol gave his opinion. Then Sol decided that actually he wanted them as well. And I said, Why Sol gazumped you. <laughs> Sol, perfect word for it. Yeah, gazumped me for it. He picks them up because I, I've spent the last five minutes trying to remember the word gazumped. I was like, it's when you're trying to buy a house and someone else buys it. What is it? It's not bazillion. It's not bamboozled. It's something else. <laughs> um, you were yeah. also bamboozled by the move, to be fair. Yeah, I was. And uh, Sol got them. They look great. And that mm. only reinforced my um, desire to buy some at What's Your Game in Jan. Uh, uh, I was so going to say, anyway. when, when did you get them? So that is my acrimonious purchase out of the way. However, the really fun one, the one that actually people are excited are people are excited for, is Girthquake. Was um, that at E4? That was E4, yeah. You've He's only, only had, had Girthquake for one event? Yep. Oh my god. Yeah, it's been a, wow. it a wild event. Um, Please explain Girthquake. Girthquake is a thick, chunky, two-handed pommel <laughs> axe that, oh gosh, I really should remember the manufacturers so I can drop it for a mm, out of desperation for sponsorship. Maybe next time we, when we fill out these sheets, we actually write down <laughs> where we've bought stuff. Yeah, the, the sentence we've One got day. on the document is, didn't buy new greaves, did buy Girthquake full stop like yeah uh, real, real descriptive chris yeah um girthquake is great yeah it is but, a, but i'm pretty sure crazy. the girth reference has you know the eighth virtue is girth um it mm -hmm. comes up so often but it was at its peak really at e4 yeah so it was just the perfect name for it girthquake such a good name yeah it's a it is quite a thick axe as well and it's got um again from the notes it's got Kevlar on both sides of it, so it's double-sided, so it can hook. Yep, Matty's face. This it is, has again, Kevlar. It has Kevlar. Inside. I was looking at that note thinking, like, that can't be what I actually think it is. <laughs> yeah, it's got Kevlar on. Yeah, because we've, but in general... How is it LARP safe? It's, it's fine. It's a soft material. No way. Because, yeah, Kevlar armor always looks in these hard, but it's actually a... Um, it's a fabric, like a isn't sort of thin it? Strip. Yeah. yeah, basically. I'm not an expert, but it's not like the ceramic plates you get in, you get inserted into Kevlar body armor. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah, this thing is designed to hook and hook hard, and it can do what it wants. And it very much did that across the weekend, as we'll you know, discover later. But yeah, Girthquake. 
beautiful piece of kit and I've never felt cooler holding it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I prefer it to the longbow. I do love my longbow. But if me and Girthquake were to elope, it would be a happy, <laughs> a happy second. It's true. Time. It's true. Yep. That's true. I'm still so it's it's also when you get a new weapon and you're like, this is oh, oh, this is a fun thing. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying this. Like I'm that way with the bow now but i had the same experience when i got the, the spear for the first time of like mm. aha this is what i've been missing oh yeah this is what it feels all right like have someone we're gonna keep moving because we haven't we haven't even hit <laughs> time in yet and i don't yeah. even know oh my god yeah uh, i skipped drill it was warm um, yeah. yeah we didn't have didn't a drill it. that's fine it was but it was so hot i mean i've got written down costume green eyes and that's because I had pieces of costume for my character, Isa, uh, and it was too hot. It was too hot to wear them. I had a, like a linen skirt and a linen dress. Should be fine. Too hot to wear them. Just could not do it. So I had to wear my underlayers, which are just green. They looked fine, but it was just green. It was green on green on green. So I was very green. <laughs> it wasn't bad. It just was very green. <laughs> so I've got to think about that, basically. But... I was really glad I got this one top, which actually is technically a tankini top. A tankini. It's like a, it's like a, like a, the top half of a swimming suit. So not a bikini, but a swimming suit. So it like is oh, like a spaghetti top. Yep. Yeah. So number it's one. Spaghetti. Sit there and think about what you've done. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what I was gonna say is number one to anyone who has to wear a bra. You don't have to wear a bra if you're wearing one of these. Very good, very comfortable. Number two, if it gets wet because you get rained on, dries out very quickly. Number three, if it gets wet because you sweat a lot, dries out very quickly. Mm. And the material itself is very breathable. So all round, I would highly suggest as a good layer of kit, to be honest. Mm. Um, but yeah, I might make some new kit. I'm hoping that it's going to be cool enough for the next one that I can wear the reds again. Because I like the reds. It makes me feel less like Larkin. Yeah, I have good and bad news for you on that front. Uh, from the weather forecast, it does look a lot cooler, about 12 degrees. And um, because it's raining. Uh-huh. Yeah. Figures. Yeah. Not a huge surprise. We, I, I would have very heavy, killed but... for a bit of rain at E4, yeah. actually. I really would. I really hope this isn't just a year of rain. To pounce out. <laughs> to pounce out. Burning. Yeah, Empire yeah. weather machine is broken. Oh my god. Okay. I think we've hit time in. Yeah, time in and standing. So we didn't really get much of our plot to E4. Some of the outstanding things are the, what we call the cheat code library. I think it's the mm -hmm. library of um, Hacinian. Hacinian, yeah, because it's not Hacinian. Yeah. Hacinian. And. Um, that is essentially going to trigger the what I like to think is the Navarre endgame. So how to tackle Forlorn permanently and reclaim some of our yeah. homelands. Yeah. Very cool. Very fun. Hasn't been finished yet. So understandably, we're not getting... We ha didn't get much at E4 because no, the rest yeah. of the Empire... The, the has library it. has. The research hasn't, for clarity. But oh, I, okay, yeah. It's going to take... I know we're like, expecting something in the winds. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> it's all strange stuff going on. Yeah, there wasn't a lot that happened, but obviously it was general's elections. Mm. And the it was... Appeared. Like, it was just... At this point, it was like, uh, oh, there's something called Cold Sun. More oh. later. <laughs> what was... um, Who who was up for election this time? Farenthar Shatter Song of the Quiet Step. Was it Quiet Step? It was Quiet Step. It better be because Farenvar is still in charge of the Quiet Step. <laughs> At least no, I'm just time. confused because obviously, no, that makes sense. That makes sense because E3 Farron was acting general because yep. there was no reason to do two elections season after season. Yeah, yeah got, I remember. Got at E2. He, well, Brenos chose to have been got. <laughs> yeah, Brenos got Brenos. That's the only yeah. the only predator. That's the that only way Brenos he was ever going to go out. <laughs> Just, I choose to die now. Was quite literally how it happened. It looks it himself good, dead in the mirror. Good, good and goes, go on, do it. <laughs> <laughs> you first. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, Farron, so quiet step elections. Exciting. Mm. Yeah, so the I'm not going to, I'll let you talk about the actual election and the military side of things, but as the champion of vigilance, I want to talk about the virtue side of things. Interesting. Yeah. Go ahead. So um, published between E3 and E4 was a statement of principle that saying effectively death to the Druze was not virtuous. Now, the, the actual context of this is that it's not virtuous for army orders. However, because a bunch of chimps you know, like myself play Empire LARP in the UK run by profound decisions, the, the news that hit the field was that death to the Druze is not virtuous omitting that key piece of context. So everyone's very upset at the idea of the Synod telling them that they can't kill the Druze because they're the ones, <laughs> yeah. of all the barbarians, the most worthy of death. They're just and, so uh, killable. I brought this up at the election. Um, how Navari elections work is candidates stand up, little speech, three questions, or maybe maybe up to five from the audience. I got mine in and it, uh, it was, is the following statement virtuous? Death to the Druze. Um, as soon as I said that, there was literal applause in the audience. And then a few candidates who were more clued up on the way the synod works um, corrected me and said, no, it's it's not virtuous, and here's why. And then each candidate have to, had to, um, with varying Respond. degrees of um, happiness, vin um, oh, not vindication. Enthusiasm? Enthusiasm, conviction, that's it. Mm. Varying degrees of conviction had to say, no, it's not virtuous, mm. but um, that <laughs> that set the tone <laughs> for it, a lot. It did set the, the tone. Uh, it does. Uh, yeah, Navari elections are, I particularly well. It's true for most of them, but it's the most notable, I think, for um the generals because it's the one that for pretty much every other nation is elected directly by the senators so they'll do an interview with you the candidates um they may not even select certain candidates and then they will decide who gets to do the thing right but navari elections as a whole are always run in the way that chris said and that also includes now the general's election so for navarre for better or for worse i could probably do an hour-long discussion on why i don't always agree with the way that it happens but you know we're not going to talk about that now. It's anyone who just wins the votes. It's t technically the winner of the votes is then it's the advisory winner that is then submitted to the senators who then have to pick. But historically, the senators have only once, I think, gone against the will of General Navarre. Mm. Um, and that was for a known her heretic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, so... In Navarre, it's really kind of almost a charisma game. It's just mm. in the moment talking. It's it's a real popularity game. So a lot of you know the way that you answer the questions isn't necessarily going to be based on you know if you say the correct thing, you've just got to say the thing that gets the crowd on your side. Um, and it's the way you present that as well. A lot of the yeah. pawns aren't attending military council. Yeah, And if you think about it, it's not a very good way to pick a general because you're asking a bunch of people who are not experts to pick Chris, something. I've just said we can't go off on this tangent because I will be just... here forever. <laughs> All right, I'll shut, I'll shut the fuck up. But um, to, to reinforce your point, you can Let show up. Let us know if you'd no like idea. to hear us discuss the way that the general's elections are held in Navarre because I have opinions. Please don't. We I just don't know if I'm allowed to speak about them. <laughs> an extra 25% workload is Matty, just going to... Matty's solo episode? Would you all like an, a lecture? A lecture on it? <laughs> <laughs> I will do nothing without the will of the people. Much like a Navari election. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> swiftly on. <laughs> swiftly on, yep. Farron got elected, um, yeah. which was amazing. Uh, it, was, it was a very close thing. It was, it was a really uh, close by, thing. Um, two... I believe it was two votes. It was it was something like that. It was really, really close. Um but obviously I believe best person still won. Was very pleased to see. Yep. Oh general, my general. Um so yeah, the the next general shatter song, <laughs> interestingly. I'm just looking at our um our prompt and souls is just I win. I win. <laughs> <laughs> 
incredible. It does just say that. Dawn's cancelled. General's elections. I win. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, it no. was so good. Um, I was very, very, very pleased. Of course, it does now mean that out of the Shatter songs, uh, Soul was the only one of no particular renown and now is of renown. Uh, so following that trend, will shortly die. <laughs> of no, course. True. Yeah, he's got about what, one, maybe two events and then... Yeah, exactly. Gone. That's it. Yeah, That's rip, all that's left. Rip, rip Farron. Exactly. Not there were a whole, oh god, there were loads of elections actually. Mm. Got down here the wisdom election, uh, won by Mr. Cambion with the excellent horns. Oh, and, yeah, and Spear of the Seven, <laughs> mm. which was. our friend Andy slash Corwin Hartspoon has been working on for god a year now. He solo made this, he got all I think the money he's been, he's been working on it from more than a year, in fact. Yeah, he's been really putting he put literally yeah. all the effort in even yeah. buying i think way leaves to get the motion brought up in senate to build the sinecure and yeah he had this vision um it's something that we talked about while i was still playing larkin um which I, it's just a it's a really good plan was to have someone who was specifically dedicated to um managing the military units of navarre because navarre is a huge nation and there are a lot of people with military units um, and historically, when we've had sudden need for it to be organised, someone has had to volunteer. I did that once. I don't know if I'd do it again. <laughs> but, you know, bless his heart, he, was, he decided he was going to do it. He was doing a great job. And uh, I think this is actually, funnily enough, speaking about elections, this is one of the few times when it was decided by the senators that he was going to be elected to the position by them without a vote Yep. for the first year. Senator for Hakinia, um, uh, good old Dave from the Lot News podcast, mm -hmm. <laughs> steps in and goes, yeah, um, blah, blah, blah. We're not holding a vote. Corwin's earned it. Corwin gets it. Shut the fuck yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, which is not, which is good. And it, it does feel right as well. Like, and yeah. it's only for a year. Then it'll be up for re-election. So, you know, it's not like someone's secretly you know, bartered and done. He's been doing a lot with the nation for a lot of the stuff and he's been doing the job itself. So yeah. it felt he could right. have made it a tenured position, but um Yeah, but he doesn't not like, like that. Yeah, exactly. Like it is I, I can understand that the personal IC reasons you'd make a, a tenured position. But having something that's elected each year is just much more fun, much more interesting. Yeah, I think I think I think, I, think I can a few tenured positions and they yeah. are difficult to shift. Don't worry, I'll cover that all in my solo uh, episode on <laughs> Navarre uh, leadership that, elections and positions. Sprinkling little <laughs> so, little notes in the um, <laughs> the page. But all yeah, of the new things. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so it was a so it was a good start for Friday, really. Now hmm. uh, there's a lot on here, but really, I think. Uh, it sounds like your evening was slightly more interesting than mine. Yeah, because was it E3 when you got voted in? in at E3, the end of I E3? rightfully won the election for the Champion of Vigilance. With exactly hang on, hang on, hang on. You votes. technically won. <laughs> well, I did. Technically, or non-technically, I won. You, there you was didn't no win, one else it, more it defaulted to you. Who was alive. <laughs> Sorry, Becca. And it didn't, it didn't even... <laughs> yeah, sorry, Becca. Um, if you're listening, Becca, we miss Ravadi. <laughs> we do. I, I believe Ravadi had the same leg armor that me and Sol got. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. looks fucking sick. But um, Linda just wants being... to be Ravadi so bad. <laughs> the, the... Linda's dream is just to be Ravadi eventually. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about. The he looked at them and was like, "Yes." <laughs> The, the cult the cult of Rivadi is actually quite strong, strong. it must be said. It's strong. Um, <laughs> it's strong. They were iconic, we'll to, you know? Yeah, we'll add that to the footnotes of your lecture. Or may, maybe mine, yeah. and, you know, how to be a terrible <laughs> champion of whatever the fuck I'm meant to be. Um, oh yeah, Vigilance. But um, yeah, so E3, Rivadi wasn't alive to compete against me, so I won fair and square. However, <laughs> that kind of if win. I, yeah, if I can say something. <clears throat> so I remember you telling me that was wild. But more than that, I remember after the event, so this was between E3 and E4, 
you were like, yeah, I'm I'm like talking to some of the other champions. There's all these plans. And then I don't know if you'd heard from someone or if you received a letter. Like it was either at an event or it was a letter or something. You were like very hurt. I'm going to say you, you were very hurt. Like they, they don't. They don't want me to do any of this. They don't think I'm going to be any good. Everyone's saying that I'm going to mess it up. And I think that was the point where you decided to put all of your effort into it. Because you were like, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Nothing does... if not easily dareable. So it does. Um, yeah, so that, that is correct. Um, rather than it being like a person, it wasn't a personal attack. It was no. very much, a, there was a strong movement to remove me immediately. <laughs> yeah. else, like immediately um and it was it was a bit sus because i thought hmm like th these these people putting this kind of message out into this you know general empire space I've, i don't i haven't met them i see or oc hmm. something's off more on that hmm. later but um hmm. the tldr well, is, it, it's also for me. it's always but a it was all IC. You'd, it wasn't IC. yeah i mean you, you'd come off playing a very infamous uh, morally yeah. grey, let's say. <laughs> Linda is a golden ray of sunshine. Linda <laughs> turned up is. to find his mum in Anvil. All right, that's oh, Linda yeah. is the best boy, and and you know, there's always an element I think where you worry that people won't be able to uh, forget your previous character. It happens, you know, because they've seen your literal actual face and cannot really actually remember things. So of course you worry about these things, but yeah. Yeah. Luckily. Something else for your, uh, for your Something solo. else for my crime. solo. Uh, That'll be my and, second and one. <laughs> the changes to crime. Crime and, and role play. And on <laughs> that top of that, the really economy. One. And uh, yeah. just how little we can do to stop the yeah. oligarchs. But anyway. Let's it's just been that. Matty uh, ranting about various things. Um, save that for the Shatter Sums side cast. <laughs> yes! Yeah. We'll get pickers on. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the money. <laughs> so anyway, um, ignoring on. Pickers and him hitting the keyboard at that sentence, um, there was a skirmish at 745 to help the orcs. We didn't go on it. That was fun. Um, the reason we didn't go on it is because we didn't show up early enough for it because we're doing all the general elections, get kitted up, jogged over, too late. The other randoms had gotten into the queue and it was clear they'd just gotten organised. So we can't really push people out at that point. Yeah, That's yeah. Hey yeah. ho. Um, following on from the interlude between E3 and 4, um, I finally meet my boss properly, the Cardinal of Village Vigilance. The Cardinal Vigilance. Of Vigilance. <laughs> God. <laughs> God. Sorry, I'm so Ian. <laughs> I'm so unqualified. Anyway, um, I believe the word, the first few words, or the words, uh, honestly, it probably wasn't the first word. Sorry. Words now. Sorry. It was. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> No, it's fine. I just I can't, I just laughed so much about the idea of you not being vigilant enough to know how to say diligence. Well, oh, God, I've done it now. It's easy. It's easy. Diligence. Anyway, oh, point being, Cardinal this might not vigilance. be the first words out of his mouth, but it was the first words I listened to and, and really heard. Was uh, you're in trouble, Linda. And um, the cardinal basically warned oh me of my imminent revocation. Mm -hmm. And that was. They a asked to have a meeting with you, didn't they? You had a meeting no, with. I was actually excluded from that. So oh. one, of the winds of, <laughs> one of the winds of fortune between E3 and E4 uh, was the oh yeah, the she um Born Watch, which is the champion of vigilant shield. It's an empire artifact. It's like the whole point mm -hmm. that champions exist is to get these shields back, and then do some other shit. I don't care, but um. <laughs> the, <laughs> That shield was in the Empire um, via a Axos um, sort of nobility character was the Vire by Gart. And basically, uh, Finton Nighthaven is the ambassador to Axos. So we um, we met, we talked, and then the Cardinal wanted to exclude me from the meeting to talk about the shield. I was within three feet and I heard, you know, the conversation and Finton basically saying, like, he he's... Why would we exclude him? But of course, this is IC politics, and it was delicious. Mm -hmm. So what this caused is the... Um, <laughs> um, I think Ian put it perfectly. Um, I think they talked about this for their E3, E4 episode is, and I quote, 
Chris is the kind of person who doesn't take things seriously until you tell him he isn't taking things seriously. Yeah. And yeah, that's exactly really what happens here. There. And it will be a theme throughout the rest of this event is basically spiting this particular conversation as, as much yeah. as possible. Yeah. But um, it yeah, was my, so true. Yeah, it was my first experience of proper politics. Mm. More on that as we go through, but mm. it didn't matter if I was good or not, what was fair or unfair, although that never really matters at Empire. Um, it was a really cool bit of RP to get stuck into. And um, it's also when you, you know it things like deliberate political maneuvering. Mm. You get that little thrill of like, ooh, ooh, this is like this is a conflict that we've all kind of bought into, rather yeah. than just someone doesn't like me and it's for something no real reason. And it's not a game; it just feels rough. When you're like, yeah. oh, okay, this is this is part of this game that I've stepped into. And by stepping into it, I've agreed to play it. And also they have, which means we both know the level that we're on for this. Yeah, that's good kind of politics. Love Definitely. it. Yeah, because there was like because it's my first time. There was a little bit of that reeling of what the hell between yeah. E3 and 4. But I was ready by the time we hit the ground at E4. So um, good to go. Very good to go. <laughs> so yeah, Absolutely. the line is... I channel my spite. I plan to show them up. Start furious trading to raise cash. That was yeah, it. you had to so. raise so much money. Yep. So Linda was not particularly wealthy. Um, I'm going to say it here, and this is OC knowledge. Linda was dealing a lot of bite at this point. So he had some cash, but it wasn't Wait, very Chris, liquid. You, you cut out a lot then. Did I? Good. I was talking yeah. about me dealing bite. <laughs> Oh, the internet specifically tried to stop you from saying Chris, it. are you sure? Can you trust people to keep OC Chris, knowledge? Don't, OC? don't do this. <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah. So anyway, um, Linda had, was, a, was a like a, originally like a potion character. The Axos drug dealers who came to town at E2 and E3. Um, dealing like there was there was a little bit of cap. ban still in his system at that. Oh, point. it was it was so funny. You know, PD can't dangle <laughs> that worm and expect me not to chomp down onto that. <laughs> so like, who's book. on this battle? Chris Anson's on this battle. Okay, then. <laughs> it's a box of blue. Anyway, um, mm. so I've got all the le- all of those drugs were legal from Axos, right? You know, all fine, mm. and um, got stuck in with those. However, buy is, of course, highly illegal. And um, I'd come across some and basically was selling it. Um, that, you know, we're talking some as like 10 doses, that, that kind of stuff. Um, however, I had had that in my pocket, my, my starting resources, and that was it. And the reason that isn't enough is because I had to raise, I had to get hold of 10 rings of Ilium within the space <laughs> of about 24 hours. Um, for those That's of you who like- don't know, Dose of bite for a ring, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, a ring of billion, not a ring. <laughs> yeah, a ring. God, that's a good rate. But each of these is worth between sort of four and five thrones, depending on who you're talking to ish. And yeah, raising 40 thrones from a, st- a start, a basically a standing start, especially when your float for trading is illegal drugs. It's not like it's cash or resources or anything useful or liquid, it's just some salt some astringent blue salts so um <laughs> more, more on those later yeah <laughs> but uh yeah very difficult challenge but again channeling spite ready to do some trading yeah yeah and i i didn't really do much until i think i found you after a trial so what led up to that how did you get from starting to trade to ending up in court <laughs> yeah <laughs> not for yourself i'd like to point out Lindy is despite the shaky bite start a good boy probably the goodest of the chris anson boys mm. <laughs> gooder in fact even than chris himself <laughs> he, got, he got good got good <laughs> he got very good so how yeah what was what on earth happened in the middle there yeah, so I missed my champions meeting, which took it at the score to three meetings in a row I'd missed. Um, my own election, my own inauguration, and my first team meeting. So employee-wise, fucking dreadful start. Mm. I was actually away, though, just trading. 
like getting hold of resources, using some of my petty cash, liquidating by it with some known faces at rock bottom prices just to get it out of my hands. So I had some um, some trading to do. I traded away the infamous Busty Rat. Um, if those mm. of you who listen to this on the regular, you might remember that celebrity rat appearing in the honeypot at E2 and E3 last year. Never um, to be seen again. He's gone, and he no longer provides for his, I think it was 532 children <laughs> underneath Sarvos, uh, because his gambling oh, problem... No. Uh, the official story he's is... He's sold into slavery! That's illegal, Chris! It's illegal No, no he's not a slave. Um, a herald took him, so I met a herald. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So just gonna. This was a herald. Like, this was the low point of the weekend. It, it wasn't so a tulpa crazier. again, was it? It was not another tulpa. I'm not... okay. <laughs> oh, Linda, getting in trouble with tulpas again. <laughs> it was real. It was a real Uh-oh. herald. I swear. But yeah, met herald. Um, was collecting, basically trading tokens of favor. Um, actually, thank you for reminding me, Matty. I have this in my pocket still. Um. I clearly need to go and talk to the Archmage of Winter about this. What? Add that to my to-do list. Yeah, more on that later. Yeah. Just after E1, folks. Um, need to go do that. Anyway, Chris, I have a question. What does, yeah, and then what does WEC brackets F, close brackets, mean? <laughs> this is the Wintermark Economic Forum. Sorry, the Wintermark Economic Community? I don't know. It's forum. It's obviously a copy of the World Economic Forum with Wintermark instead of Worlden. They are a group of yeah. traders. Think of it a mm-hmm. bit like our Brokers Council, but much more... Uh, that's not fair. I was about to say much more successful. Um, I'd, I'd say much <laughs> more wealthy because they, yeah. I walked into this tent and they're bandying around like hundreds of thrones and I thought, jackpot, this is what I need for the shield and mm. the ilium, right? And I walk in and say, sorry to interrupt, blah, blah, blah. I need Ilium. Can any of you sell it to me? <laughs> they look at me and they're like, you shouldn't be here and we're not interested. <laughs> like, this is none of your business. And I pull out the coolest line, but at, at least until this point, as Linda, which is, I'm the champion of vigilance. Everything is my business. <laughs> and it, just, it just fell out of my mouth. Nice. And I was like, that was much cooler than I felt inside. And... Um, <laughs> That actually got me in the door, and they were like, "Oh, oh shit!" A couple of them started <laughs> scooping their coins back into their pouches, and I'm like, "Yeah, what are you doing? But, is this a okay? Raid? This might be a rumor, and no one is allowed to use this as information because I could be telling complete lies. Um, but if it's the same meeting that I know about slash have walked past, it's one where they discuss what they're going to pay for boss resources. It was, and I believe that was the one where they were having a debate about whether they were going to crash the economy or not essentially they were trying to decide a way to not do that but they had to work together in some particular way in order to make that work i don't know Pretty and well, it was it was it that one you're problem. nodding oh my god yeah yeah that was um <laughs> yeah that was pretty wild um walking in on that hung around had some chats won't go into that any further because that's like other people's game but from my point of view i found someone to sell me some ilium so i'm a happy boy and then at this point i hear that there's been an attempted murder oh yeah (laughs) oh that's it and this is how i end up in oh god oh god yeah no it was a good time i remember um right at the beginning hearing OC from one of our camping mates and friends that they, I think he had some plans for something that he wouldn't tell us about, which was to to keep it secret, to keep it safe. No, but also, you know, sometimes you don't want to drag other people into it or you want to see what happens first. Um, and they were, they, they were crime-related plans. They were IC driven politically slash possibly to do with backstory stuff that had then interacted with things on the field. Either way... Yeah, this was a concerned citizen for sure and it was very much like a, a high drama political move. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was like you know, someone trying to make a statement. 
slash kill someone <laughs> you know yeah it was it was a it was an attempt depending on them. what you believe yeah and that that murderer that, well that wannabe murderer was our dear friend percy blackleaf the the, the now uh <laughs> now deceased Percy. Blackleaf. now deceased that's the word yeah 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 well, i can't remember what it was i mean obviously i don't think it was successful it was not it was completely <laughs> not successful. Is it the one where he fell over? Yep. <laughs> On top of them? Yep. And then was grabbed by other citizens. Yeah, yeah. I think he tripped or something. And uh, yeah. obviously, you know, it's not supposed to get physical, so things kind of had to take a step back. But he still got arrested. And somehow, despite facing someone we know to have a particular affinity for the death sentence, he did not die. I walked into the tent as this was finishing, as mm. you were like saying goodbye to this whole situation. I, I mean, I wasn't happy, but before then, <laughs> you did it, man, you did it. Yeah, I got him off. Um, it was a literal attempted murder. Um with which he confessed to as part of his plea with at least 10 five to 10 witnesses um you know a, 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 what you call it yeah cold-blooded killing mm -hmm. with a very clear motive uh, for premeditated money. yeah Pre thank you premeditated as well so yeah um, basically percy uh the vibe was that um actually as, as massey mentioned there were some players in a very cool way, like OC, I think these players are fucking great. I see there are some oligarchs that can <laughs> choose, basically at any point choose to crash oh, our economy yes. and also yes, control the prices on force resources, which is what they do because, like, why wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. But um, he was trying to make a difference to that. Uh, I think it was for a particular mithril seat. And the, the vote was happening either later that evening or early the next morning. I think it was the next day. And he just decided that this, this, this particular player had to die. To oh, character, to character. This particular character had to die. <laughs> character, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Walks in Chris is like, no, no, no. It was an actual murder trial. <laughs> yeah, he's got a Mark II murder. fragmentation grenade and rolled it oh into his God. tent at 3 a.m. <laughs> no, no, it was, um, yeah, this character, sorry. Thank you. Um, had to die and like you said botches yep. the, the murder gets caught mm. brought in and um, was unlucky. I, I, I try and um, stamp my ticket as a defense lawyer and trot in to uh, to defend him and as as not only the champion of vigilance but a professional s speaker and convincer of other peoples really so that sort of stuff is your jam oh you mean sales yeah yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Giving, giving talking to people and convincing them want. to change their mind. <laughs> Please give me six point like four thing. million dollars. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. God, I feel so... like I should now. <laughs> if you don't, I won't leave. Nah, no, that is <laughs> that's how to get arrested. Um, so mm. yeah, ba the basic defense play was that actually just stating that particular problem with oligarchs threat to the empire that vigilance is all about protecting what you care about um making sure that others are safe through your actions and finding things to look after it's basically yeah. like being a mother duck and i think it's quite endearing in that light oh. um it's not about extermination and rigidly sticking to a doctrine in case something goes wrong more on that later <laughs> more on that after <laughs> e1 because there's been a major doctrine change that i'm not yeah on board with should um, be interesting yeah. So anyway, um, we go through, talk to the magistrate, and say, you know, this I, this is very foolish, but this was a vigilant act, and in fact, by showing the displeasure of the common citizenry towards this particular character, uh, we might indeed save the empire hundreds of thrones, which means that we will be able to pay armies, we'll be able to pay for upkeep on fortifications, and people will not die because of Percy's actions. Um, it. Like you said, it worked. It fucking worked. <laughs> um, unbelievable. Yeah. Especially unbelievable because it was the same magistrate who had killed Ban Chattersong. Mm. So, 
There had to be an <laughs> added level for you. For not exactly, for not commit exactly. I just want to put those two side by side for a second. Yeah. This will come up again in my uh laws and uh, injustices of the empire uh lecture. That's episode three of the Shatter Sums podcast, Matty only. Um <laughs> <laughs> I'm pitching it. The Matter Song uh, podcast. <laughs> Ban Shatter Song commits no crime executed on suspicion of maybe going to be attempting to do a crime. Decent suspicion, still unsubstantiated. Mm. Percy Blackleaf, <laughs> broad daylight, Winterbark, hundreds and hundreds of witnesses, no death, just a fine. A hefty fine, and but a fine guilty nonetheless. To the crime. Confess to the crime, yeah. Attempted yeah, murder. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, we know we've seen actual murder can get you just a throne fine as well. So look, there is no consistency. That's why that's going to be one of one of my lectures. But at, like as a player, right? As you as Chris facing someone who who is you know just another person as a character, but there's still a, an element of you know this is the person that killed you last time. Like that's got to feel some kind of way like what what was it feeling like it, it was more the um you know like sort of stage fright of you're sitting in front of people and looking at percy and he he looked pretty defeated at this point um mm. because he he knows his character is that the odds of him getting out of this alive are extremely low because with executions they're enacted immediately and a lot of our friends had gathered to say goodbye to him <laughs> chris <laughs> you're going in and out again oh no Oh no! Right, oh, start no. your story again. All right then. How did it feel? How did it feel? So the Percy had basically given up at this point. His friends had come to say goodbye, and uh, I was the—I wasn't really thinking about this particular magistrate. I was more thinking about Percy. Of this was kind of a cool character, lasted about a year. You know, this this matters. And I, I kind of I want this to be mm. at least a good attempt mm. to save his life, even though he's probably going to die anyway. Mm. I don't want to feel like I'm the reason that his his lovely little character gets turned into strawberry jam by the militia. <laughs> oh, and um, you were saying when while the internet was crumbly about how they do the executions. Yes, so the executions are immediate. <laughs> yes, they are. At the end of the trial. <laughs> You so, don't um, get to say a damn thing. You don't get to say a single thing. It is, I pronounce that the judgment be death. Bam, you're dead. That's it. It yeah. is literally that fast. Yep. More on that in episodes <laughs> of <Yeah. laughs> Matthew's podcast. Anyway, yeah, God. Yeah, so... Um, but it was, you know, I mean, yeah, it's crazy. It's the it first time you've done that, too. Yeah, first first ever virtue defense, and I thought being champion of vigilance, I should probably at least try it, right? And just you know, you know, not to be crude, but swing my dick in the breeze. You know, it's like, oh look at me, I'm the <laughs> champion of vigilance. I'm definitely an authority on whatever he's done, um, which I'm, which mm. is not true. But um, if mm. I really get to come off, it was a twenty five throne fine, so real steep. Okay, which as everyone knows is. About the collective worth of half of Navarre. Yeah. So this was a delay to his death sentence. And it had to be yeah. paid before the end of the weekend as well. So he yeah. was dying that weekend or in debt. Yeah, I, I, I think the, the other Black Leaves would have just killed him. It would <laughs> yeah. just been easier. So... It would have been easier. <laughs> the right thing to do. Yeah. Unfortunately, Percy, um, Percy didn't survive until the end of the weekend. He was killed in battle against the enemy. Well, unfortunately for Pickers, because Pickers has now inherited this debt, apparently, which is not. Yes, since apparently debts can be inherited now. Yeah, which I more find... on that in. <laughs> <laughs> so, so many tangents, right? That's that's. I've got through. so many rants to have. Yes. Okay. Power so I through. arrived. I uh, had a bit of a bone to pick with this proceedings. Um, and Isa is a lot more outspoken um, than Larkin was and cares a lot less about being political and, and polite. 
Um, and so I charged in and I started asking questions about how it all works. There was, so I did have an actual reason. I wanted to try without it dropping directly OC. I was trying to find out certain things about how the magistrates work. <laughs> because you hear <laughs> oh, the no, but... at the back of the tent and they just throw it at the penalty. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I was like, I wanted to know how it works. Like, I, what I was really trying to get at without, again, dropping OC was I wanted to ask if are you all NPCs? In that case, are you playing with character biases or are you fundamentally like an, it, it's not possible for you to be flawed? So therefore... And by saying the next thing, I think I will start to give away some personal opinions. But if someone is being a dick, is it on purpose or is it by accident? Is it a character thing you are playing as this NPC that we can react to um, and take as plot, essentially? Mm -hmm. Or is it that you just as a player, such an NPC player, you believe that you're doing the right thing and actually it's just coming across as not very good. I, I, nice. I can tell you the answer to that if you if you don't know still. Well, well I sort of do, but for the, the for the sake of everyone else listening. Sure. So magistrates are NPCs. It is on the crime page on the wiki. Not that you have to read it to play the game, but it's there. No, I know they're NPCs, but you can be an NPC and be infallible like the civil service right or there are people like people the, the civil servants in the hub they don't have biases they don't have like necessarily opinions on things they don't influence plot but egregores also npcs can influence plot they have different oh, opinions they have different personalities they have an they have like a character so to speak so they have something that's a bit lot more interactable you could dislike an egregore because they're playing a particular character and know that they're playing a character. Gotcha. In which case, does that I make believe, sense? Yeah. In which case, I'll I will change I... my answer to the magistrate. <laughs> you know, they're NPCs, but they're definitely playing characters. And some of them are different yeah. to others. And there is a yeah. lot of variance, and yeah, there are good days. So there are good magistrates and bad magistrates to see when you're in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. Fundamentally, <laughs> though, I have actually also asked this of. Um, like crew people they are supposed to be unflawed therefore there is not ever going to be a game of like corrupt politician magistrate mm. yeah um not corrupt but some are very much like let's start the heads rolling that the bodies yes before. and others yeah. are like oh let's just do a fine we need more money anyway because it goes yeah. into the senate yeah. budget which inherently feels like they might be flawed <laughs> let's put it out there i see i see um, nothing wrong with dead criminals and <laughs> <laughs> this message paid by the anvil militia <laughs> yeah exactly you can be like a anyway attendant, pulling people into court and giving them getting them fines yeah but i mean that. like They're so short of money why not anything to make a bit of cash so I will, anyway, I, st I strode in to have this conversation. I just remember you being like, don't, it's so close. He could change his mind at any yeah. second. <laughs> I was like, Matty, what I was are like, you doing? That would be, that would be, if that happens, then I, 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 you know, honestly, if he turned around and been like, okay, I'm changing my mind. I would have jobbed him there and then. I really was that angry. <laughs> like, that would have been the ultimate answer to the questions I was going to ask. I, it's... <laughs> it would have been... The feet snatched from the jaws of victory. Yeah, if, if he that would have been a really, really poor move. Like I would have, I would have probably actually complained to PD genuinely on an OC note if that had happened. Would have been like, spicy. I'd have charged, charged on over there. It would have been uh, very on the spicy. Of <laughs> attempted murder again in the future. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, you know, they've changed some of the sort of legal rules as well. Hmm. Mm. There's been a clarification now. Anyway, that's that's something slightly else. But after that, <laughs> bark roll. Bark roll. It was a good yeah, time. So... And oh, most of it was just fun. Mm. My my e the easy descriptor is I went out and got more ilium. Um, Ossian helped me out. One of the other uh, guys at Black Scarf. Yes. Really good at sniffing out where ilium was, and then. 
getting like I'd give him coin, for example, to go and just buy it from people and stuff. Yeah, like that that. that that is someone who is destined to be a great broker. That's broker all over it. That that is just, just, that it's just good brokerage. Good yeah. Yeah. Um, we ended up at, first of all, actually, it was really nice. We started at the Drunken Goose and I, it was, we were all very tired. I was having a really great reminiscing chat actually with Tiki about old stories. We managed to stay IC enough to be like, so Tiki obviously is playing his own son <laughs> now. Oh my God. Is Blythe he... is Tiki's son. <laughs> yeah. Did you not know this? The age Tiki difference was Blythe's father. <laughs> Nah, Tiki, Tiki was just much older than he looked, and Blythe is much younger than he looked. <laughs> T, you know, Blythe is about 16, and <laughs> Tiki was 42. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, continue. <laughs> it's not true, it's not true, but that's that's my, my justification. Um, that's and obviously, I play playing Isa. <clears throat> uh, Isa knew Larkin at least pretty well, so had uh in inverted commas heard lots of stories so we were reminiscing about some old times um for the first while which was just really nice it was just a lovely time mm. and then we headed off and we ended up in the empire bar brand new which, which was very confusing and yeah it was amazing it was that giant bar at the bottom of high guard i believe yeah, the big, they were uh, using it for high guard national word, meeting like, earlier on. yeah with like a proper like stage floor in the center, a yep. bar. They had music. They they had, had them. They had specific permission from PD for all of the things that they did. Um, yeah. But it, it was, was quite, amazing. Like, the size of it. It must have been what? Yeah. Fifteen meters in diameter. I don't. I I Maybe honestly couldn't even tell you. It was huge. It was so so cool. It was big, and it, it was, was so much fun. We get in, and they were doing dancing. So we joined in with some of the dancing. There was just loads of our little group there. It was super fun. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was nice because you you don't get to do things like dance, and that's always just a fun little time. You feel like you're in Hobbiton, <laughs> you know, having a having a dance along. It's very immersive. Like mm -hmm. we found from, uh, was it E4 or was it E3 when we went to High Guard? Um, I think that was E3. I think that was E3 because that was after E2 with the poisoning. You're thinking of Balthazar the Winter. No, but yeah, but was that E4? No. Yeah, that was E3. No, no, it was E3. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I can't remember. I, I remember meeting some of, the, some of the players within Balthazar's Vineyard, or the Balthazar's yeah. chapter, whatever it is. But it um, was it was like that like... moment. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it, it was much like that moment. It's those moments that those really feel the immersive ones. You know, when people start singing in a bar or you're dancing around. Because those are the things that really don't ever happen in real life. You know? Yes. So they, I, yeah. for me, Especially are the ones where I'm like, oh, this really is. Yeah. It was the last <laughs> time you all burst into song and a weather spins. Um, but yeah, so the Empire Bar was amazing. That was good fun. And I don't remember how it started. But knife fights started. Um, very quickly, our group was sort of just doing little knife fights on, on the stagey bit. And then people started crowding around people. Tiki, well, Blythe jumped into referee, um, and people started betting. <laughs> I made some <laughs> money off uh, convincing one of ours to throw a fight, <laughs> and she was very convincing. And I just yep. fleeced some leaguers, and they had no, they really genuinely had no idea. I thought it was a really obvious play, huh? like I thought it was obvious, and they, no, no idea. Maybe so anyway, have, I got. Leave, they, I, well I, I told them about it them. afterwards because I was like, "Yeah," and they just let me keep the money. And I was like, "Thanks, mate." <laughs> Cheers. Was that I see you told them, but it was a scam. Yeah, yeah. What the hell is wrong with Isa? I wasn't gonna <laughs> give. I wasn't gonna give the money back. No, no, no I'd already pocketed the money. It was, not, it was, I can't remember what it was. I no, I think um, I think um, Harold could come up and ask for her share, <laughs> something like ah. that. There was a I reason. See. Or maybe I just, I couldn't quite resist the urge to gloat is more likely. Mm, no, that's, no that, that makes a bit more sense. Yeah, you get that urge. Yeah. 
So yeah, well, that was good fun. Flies, that was really. <laughs> no, it was good fun. It was really nice. Um, and then you guys came in and told us that you'd got all the the ilium. Yeah, and it was a very late <laughs> night. I was maybe a couple rings off, but um, I think the final note I've got in there is I came in and quote found all the main characters because I, I walk into this bar and I see all of you lot, all my friends, and I'm like, oh my god, great, fantastic. And then the final thing is, can we scroll up just a smidgen? There we go. Um, I got a 25 throne loan at 3 a.m. written in blood. And I'm not going to elaborate on that. Saturday morning. All right. All right. Fair enough. Keep your secrets. <laughs> is it binding if it's at 3 a.m.? Is that what the blood was for? Yeah, this was an OC blood contract uh, for 25 <laughs> To make sure... 25 oh, chairs we're, we're, from we're in, Wilco. We're in time out now? Okay, well, I guess it's the blood contract then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's no, there's no hearth magic. It is just blood. It's not legally blinding. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Saturday, main battle. I can't remember where we went. Where did we go? We were against the Druge. I believe this was one of the final battles for the Barons. Mmm. That would make sense. That would make a lot of sense. For the next while, because we'd already taken the Spires of Dusk. Because I remember going around in dawn, going. After the Hounds of Glory were nobody killed um, in storming that citadel. But um, I think this was like a mop-up operation. And uh, it was it was a fucking great battle. Um, a lot happened. It was very dynamic. In the woods, lots of manoeuvre and shifting and ambush and counter-ambush as well. A uh, real yeah. exciting one, for sure. I remember... It was it was one of the many, but in particular, it was one that was so hot standing at the Sentinel Gate that I think we were honestly, I, I, with the banner and everything, trying to hide under it in the shade. Oh, I couldn't wear armor. I didn't wear a single thing of armor. And I was like, I'm an archer. If I get hit, I'll go down. It's fine. You know, I'll deal with that. And it, it was great. I actually really liked it. I had a great time. I was still green eyes, though, of course. But um, yeah, it was the it was the scarches, the black scarches again. It was us again. But I can't remember how it started. Take it away. Yeah. So there's actually a perfect picture of this. Um, you and me. I think it's a Oliver Facey one, sort of doing a bit of screening as we go on to that particular battle. And yeah, I've actually just, just pulled it up in front of me now. Um, is it the one where you're crouching and I'm standing next to you with it is indeed. an incredibly I've got suspicious expression on my face? Yeah, you're like a bit mm, bitter. I'm like, mm, <laughs> like the meme girl. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> so but, um, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was hot, as, hot as sin. And um, Yeah, yeah it was. I was so glad that we got into the, the, the forest really quickly. Yeah. And it's it's something that um, Navarre struggles with is headwear. Um, a bandana is about it, but uh, for like really hot days like that, I, I went for basically like a little green gardening hat with some, I think it was some fake lavender in there. Yeah. And tried to make a little boon hat just to you know, it's anything just to keep the sun off my bald bald head. Mm. Um, it, yeah, it felt cute. A little bit marchery though. But, uh... It was a bit marshy, but it it also was fine. You you weren't overly like we always talk about kit, and we're we're very judgmental of our own kit. I think, and that's because oh, yeah. we have high standards, and that's good. Um, but it is worth remembering that your kit is very very good. So one hat that is mostly pretty good, but then looks a little bit marshy is not going to ruin the illusion. Yeah, it was a green sun hat, so meh. Yeah, good enough fine. and practical. As Navarro mm. should be. <laughs> but yeah, um, that, you know, the burning sun in our eyes aside, fucking awesome battle. Um, oh, so good. The main emotions, sort of TLDR, is we go into the woods, we strike left, swing around into the fort, swing around the back, push up into the top left of the woods, if you're looking at it from above. 
then we start getting hit in the rear then we come back down wait yeah yeah then yeah we here where we head up and then down again then piss off we so were all over the place exactly, yeah yeah real mo- really mobile battle i remember not much happening on the field there wasn't a lot happening on the field no and then when we got into the forest and blatsko went left and up into the ferny bit mm-hmm. and i think we actually left them and went right because there was a force that was amassing there was some kind of regroup coming out i think that was that was the bit where you were like <laughs> was it, Isaac, was it this? that one yeah literally it was that. like yeah. it was that moment that was a little bit later in the battle but um that moment because we, we can't leave the listeners gagging for that long <laughs> is um most people don't want to die and you could abuse yeah. that fact in the battlefield by pointing a bow at them so mm-hmm. there was an orc unit advancing. So we just ran up yeah. the two of us. Reinforcements. Yeah, we just ran there and sort of put, put our bows under tension and aimed it at them. And they, they and slowed, slowed the fuck down. down. It was amazing. Yeah, they, and I think us, someone else came and joined us after that. But yeah, two of us. Yeah. That's it. That really? was a unit of 30. And they formed a shield wall and just stood there. <laughs> I'm like, cool. <laughs> cool. We've, yeah. we've done our job. Awesome. Great. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You enjoy being over there? We'll stay here. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, I remember we, we, we kind of kept Black Scar Banner in sight as usual, but then ended up running around. And you, you said the main emotions of the fight. Honestly, the main emotions of the fight were fun. Yeah. It was fun. It was, it was no brutal. stakes for us. It um, was just excellent. There was a lot of um, return fire. There were a lot of archers monstering, yeah. as well as lots of archers fighting. So for archers, and there was a lot of skirmishing, so there was not a lot of walls there was lots of this person over here, this group over here, lots of legs available. <laughs> <laughs> legs. Legs. I, was, I, I owe you a ring, don't I? You owe me you owe me more than a ring at this point. Specifically for the battle this time round. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. This is the shoot this it, is a recurrence. You shoot in the leg. Honestly, this is a recurrence of two things. One, anytime someone tells me, I bet you you should try this shot, I normally make that shot, even if it's an incredible one. Please yep. see uh, previous conversations about shooting Chris in the tankard. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Pink Which was incredible. <laughs> it's also a recurrence of um, you remembering me doing things that I don't remember. Which is pretty good because at least someone remembers me doing cool I stuff. You're in the red mist. Like, all you can see is death. I'm just, ha- I'm hopped up on so many good, like, good adrenaline vibes. It's yeah, the but... best feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Saw that pre-battle fight, you know. Mm. It's just, it's so much fun. And it was so much fun. Oh my yeah. god. So, oh. the, um, this was the, I think E3, We techni- I, I technically did it once. But this battle was the birth of the Lindir pincushion. So, mm. um, I did it against the Yota at E3 once, and it got them very upset. But basically, you shoot, you find someone who's injured near a line. And you just keep shooting them on the floor until they are dead, dead. Because often people will lose a limb, they get cleaved, and they, they sit there and the line's about a meter behind them. As mm-hmm. an archer, you just, can't, you just start shooting the shit out of them. <laughs> Obviously safely, of course, OC. But I see, you just pincushion the fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they blow yeah. off limbs. It's like, you know, playing with a fly. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Just ripping off its wings. Like I think my favorite target at E4 was arms. Mm. I was always aiming for arms getting that arm so they drop your weapon i was going for other archer arms as well yeah that yeah. was that was the key one oh, it's legs for me you see it's like fire red and leaf green but I the thing them. is and i've actually written this as a note later but this is something i've repeatedly used and it's completely allowed you're allowed to fight from the ground you are you you, you use a leg you you lose a leg and you, you have to go down on your butt but that yeah. doesn't mean you can't swing at everyone nearby if you've got a weapon Precisely. so I'm always about the arms first, because, you know... Ah, but they can run off and get healed. You hit them in the legs, and then you pin cushion them. You just yeah, keep... Because they, all your arrows you are You are supposed place. to drop your weapon as well, if you, uh, if you get a hit in the arm. But, you are you know. supposed to. But I suppose they're not armed at that. <laughs> Quite literally not armed <laughs> yeah. after the arm yeah. shot. But the legs, yeah. they, can, they can swing all they want. But if you're three or four metres away, just... <laughs> just putting shots into them. Very it's satisfying. True, true. Big power vibe. So, yeah, can recommend. Yeah. Um, Your choice of limb. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it was uh, so, so much fun. Oh my god, Druge also great because they fan out. They were all mixed mm-hmm. and matched. 
Um, I found out later that some of my people that I knew had been targeting me and I had no idea until af afterwards. I had someone who said, oh yeah, you got me. I was running straight at you and you got me. And I was like, I don't remember this Red um, <laughs> at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I do remember that there was a point where an orc was running towards me and I was like, why are you coming straight from me? And I just pewed them. And I mean, it was fine. I was fine. Turns I'm actually quite a good shot, even though I'm not wearing my glasses. Yeah. Human sized target. Weird. For that. me, it's easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we've got. Um, it's muscle memory. Yeah, from the notes, it's big battle, lots of trick shots. Like, there was lots mm -hmm. of, like, there were so many amazing shots. And going out as well. Yeah, it was so mutual. I think that that was the real fun, was that it wasn't just a battle it was fun, it was that us archers were having a great time against the other archers. There was a whole other game going on. Like, yeah, for it was chest. just like, honestly, it was just so good. I think we went to support, just looking at my notes, we supported the orcs first. We got separated from Black Scar. There was a heckler who was just on top of a log screaming at them, going blah, 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 slave, slaves, waving some shackles. And someone was like, shut him up. Obviously, oh, your oh hero God. here, Lindy Thornhart, steps out into the open, shot. Yep. Uh, as yep. he's about to turn around the duck, I hit him right mm -hmm. in the back of the, because he's got, he's, <laughs> he goes down, hit him in the back of the neck. So he just goes, clack. Guy's great role player and just cartwheels off the log and just lies there. And I was like, oh my oh, God. Wicked. Mm. Obviously, Drew Arch comes and make fires and I just do a little, mm. it's not Matrix oh, level, but it's just a little sidestep and it goes in front Where's of my face, maybe about a hand span in front of my nose. Mm -hmm. Did not feel very comfortable. Yeah, this cool. was this was making amazing shots and also avoiding amazing shots. So there were a lot of amazing shots fired at us, and there were a lot of very good misses mm. because we managed to avoid them somehow. Oh yeah, and it was Lots it's you know, loot. oh yeah, oh god, it was Loads so good. Of, we, we pulling out herbs and like magic items and stuff. Yeah, like profitable. You did actually. your you did your crawling up on trying to get the ape, apex the, predator. The apex predator. So that, okay, <laughs> let's preface by saying there were a lot of amazing archers on the monster side. It's so really good. I remember two in particular, and of those two, there was one that kept cropping up who was wearing full chainmail hauberk. Yeah, and cool as a cucumber. No, didn't speak. No heckling. Just. Just, just made kill. the most amazing shots. Most like, we we got very shots. lucky not to be hit by a lot of them. Yeah. Um, very, very cool. So we were like, ah, this is the Apex Predator. <laughs> he was, Naturally he was, coined he, by Chris. Yeah, yeah, he, <laughs> he was. Really like, was. He, we'd, we'd advance through the woods and then out of nowhere, there'd just be like a you know, fucking M6, uh, like, sorry, a machine gun would just basically open up on us. Yeah, it, it was, was three yeah. archers plus the Apex Predator. They'd yeah. kill about, sorry, they'd put down about eight or nine Imperials. We'd literally, yeah. I think at one point, um, I think this is just before the the world's greatest shot. I'm just going to put it out mm -hmm. there. My yeah. world, my greatest ever shot. But we were like lying behind some bracket. It was like in a, like a first person shooter, you know, you take cover behind a chest high wall. And we yeah. were lying there, just as screams rang out as arrows went over us, like just went whoosh, and then hit yeah, other like yeah. Dornish knights and stuff. We're oh, getting God. absolutely murdered and we're trying you to know, shoot back. The more you say about this, the more I wish I remember. <laughs> I'm not but surprised. It sounds you... great when you're telling me about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the red, the red mist must have been on because it's probably the only way fun. you like, we survived it. But you, it was yeah. literally, it was no longer oh, archery at LARP. It was blind firing Gears of War style at each other. We obviously yeah, weren't blind like firing. What I imagine, frantic. like paintball or something, is like. Yeah, yeah. I've not done it, but I imagine it's very much that kind of vibe. It was real, like following we pinned, tracking. We were pinned down. Yeah. I, oh. I genuinely felt if I stood up and ran, I would be hit. So I had to mm -hmm. lie down. Yeah. Oh, I do vaguely remember this because I think they didn't know we were there and that was the only reason we were alive was because we were much closer to them than yeah. the people that were being shot at. Yeah, and they we were just, just like, don't, don't, don't let them know, them. don't let them know. <laughs> yeah, and, but like they'd Wait. run past us, we'd shoot some in the back and stuff like that. Mm, but, yeah, I thought it was good. Or, yeah, they... Oh, um, man. I remember that last bit. So they were pulling up towards the top gate. Mm. That was like near the end. Um, and that was when we decided and, uh, to go Metal Gear Solid on them. It was a ghost <laughs> recon. <laughs> this was you. So No, this was, it was actually. We were, we, no, yeah, you no, and I, like, we need right to hunt him down because that one yeah. archer is going to kill hundreds of Imperial No, that, that was the last bit. So before that is the other shot. Oh yeah. So um, that was the other bit was when we were pulling out. So. <laughs> 
we were they were already pulling back that way and we were standing on sort of the path that leads to midgate leading and that was that was some of the best shooting back and forth because it was we knew it was coming towards the end of the battle and at that point there was going to be no ground gained or loss and i think there was this kind of like obviously unspoken agreement that sort of went between the couple of archers over there and us two and if there was someone else i can't remember there was also that one person who was just like a ranger elf and she kept running and jumping onto a tree nearby and shooting yes. him and then running away oh and she was God, so yeah, cool was and we were both yeah. just there like oh, you're great <laughs> and then she just vanished again and be like wow <laughs> <laughs> did i see that is this real <laughs> wow <laughs> just like an angel appeared and disappeared again it was very cool but yeah so there was i think pretty much just the two of us and then a couple of them and at that point there's no reason to fire there is no reason to fire back and forward. It's going to be useless. It's quite easy to to miss, right? And you might you're going to have to end up getting your um, arrows left. There's no logical reason, but it is fun. Oh yeah. And we are all doing archery because we like doing archery, <laughs> and we like fun. Yeah, we do love fun. So it was. It just sort of seemed to be the sort of natural thing that we were just going to stand there and just see who could hit who, basically. Yeah, it was still a fire really fight. Move. It wasn't like a oh, let's you know, gentlemanly duelist like an 18th yeah. century French noble. No, no, it was still no, like was really trying, gunning you know? each other down. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. I that was the point where I got the compliment, which is the best thing that has ever happened to me. Mm. Is the apex predator themselves, probably himself, not sure, um, and I think said, uh, <laughs> um, shouted out something like the one in the tree green trousers is a very good shot. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking around and being like, oh, is oh, that me? <laughs> and I was like, thanks. And then I was like, wait, I mean, fuck you. I'm not sure. <laughs> thank you. I don't oh want to be complimented you, by yeah. a druge, but also, damn, that feels good. <laughs> so, yeah, it was really, really, really cool. I mean, I, look, okay, look, I just want to point out that on the dock, I'm, I've written down one ring if you. So clearly I remembered that at the time. Yeah, <laughs> I just true. haven't retained it since <laughs> and then. And it is one ring, not five, which is much better. Uh -huh. I, I mean, it doesn't say how many times you said that. But yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> but yeah, it's, nice, it's always nice, you know. I haven't done archery for that long. And like I said, I need glasses in my day to day. I have quite mm. bad vision. So it's quite cool to be good at something that I probably shouldn't be. And actually be good at it, you know. It's fun. It's fun. I had my new bow and everything. It just felt really, really good. Mm. We um, and then we go through recon till end. But the one, my best shot is Linda, and I've had some fucking crackers. Mm. Um, hit an orc in the leg because, as we know, it's the best place. Orc goes down. Another orc comes okay. along to pop the old, good old stay with me and yes, will help help assist walking and, and get them out of there. And I'm like, yeah, just like um. Anyone not following the Geneva Convention, medics are <laughs> legitimate targets. So Fair you game. injure someone, you, you injure always someone. shoot into the healers. If you've got a good target, shoot the healer. Yeah, you just shoot. You know, it's uh, standard sniper stuff. You shoot someone dead in the open. So you shoot someone in the open. They're not dead. Sometimes they are, but another trooper will probably come and get them at some point, and you just wait for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Luckily at Empire, that's about 15 seconds, so it's not too long. So this other orc comes along, is about to pop a stay with me, and I fire again, trying to hit this guy. Now, part of the roleplay is you, you, you don't do it anymore because I've changed it, but they were sort of, take my hand, yes, brother, um, mm -hmm. clasping hands together. And literally, as they clasp on each other, my arrow decides to get in the way. And <laughs> I don't mean it bounces off one of their hands. I mean, between them, they wrap this thing. So they end what? up holding it in the middle of the shaft, and it stops. Oh my god! And they just there's I I, I just my jaw drops. I'm like eyes are like look 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 look. And of course you oh at this point god. the doom music is playing, so you've got no idea what the fuck's going on. <laughs> I, I think can't, you start I shooting remember at them. seeing <laughs> one of your amazing shots, and I it might have well been that one. I think it was that one. It, it's got to mm. be because they. I remember the that. Arrow. I just remember there being a moment where I saw something, and I was like. No, I saw that. Don't worry, I saw that. Obviously, I've forgotten now, but you know, yeah, yeah, I saw right. it then. <laughs> it mattered at, the, at that time. It did, it did. But my jaw just dropped open. They, yeah, they, they looked at their hands, looked at me, looked at their hands. The ref next to him was just like his jaw, he had sunglasses on, but his jaw just went, <laughs> it just hung open. Yeah. We all just stood there, like, yeah. we all just basically immediately went OC, but just staring at each other, like the vibe was gone. I was like, that's incredible. <laughs> 
And then these two walks, <laughs> kudos to them, started tugging. Because <laughs> so both, both limbs are like... crippled. And they were like, what do we do? <laughs> and then the third orc comes along and starts pulling, like miming, pulling it out of their hands like a kebab, like a, like a chicken satay skewer. That's what it was. And I, oh, I never, ever, I don't think I'll ever be a repeat of that shot. And but, I don't think I'll ever incredible. feel as good. But my that God, incredible. it was just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, so In a good. battle already made incredible by yeah. the didgeridoo firefight. I don't know if you yeah, remember the, the no, orc that, musicians was, getting shot at. Was that not E3? No, this was, this was, this was about oh four or five metres away from us getting machine gunned. What? Which is also another four or five metres away from the orc kebab. Oh my god, there's so Once we got into that glade happening. roughly in the middle, we... we it was a good one for us. God, I've no yeah. idea what Sol and the others were doing. <laughs> Murdering orcs, I think. Sol got yeah. 24 melee kills. Oh, was this the one where Grauka told us that basically your whole job is just to kill as many orcs as you can? I think so, yeah. They had the, the, the goose, target, yeah, the, the one of the, or the main objective, or one of the objectives was to kill a certain number, mm. which meant that the orcs had to kill, like, yeah, and Black Scar just eviscerated <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as just... many as they could. Yeah. <laughs> Between us and them, I mean, I'm sure they, they would absolutely hammering you know we're having mm. a great time yeah but yeah between, oh my god yeah, between black skull orcs and us easily 100 kills if not more yeah 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 easily time it was a really good time i remember so i i think if you're looking what i'm looking at i think this was mm -hmm. actually after uh before this because this was it right at the end was, yeah so because we've it. as we've established i actually do remember this one it's like all the only <laughs> things i remember and i remember the other one too so we were during this sort of back and forth volley of who could hit and i i was like i think i managed once to hit the apex predator right under the line of his chain sleeve mm -hmm. and i got him in the arm and it was such a glorious moment obviously he limped off to to go and get something healed so but he couldn't shoot for a while and i felt really good about that because it's it's Probably saved like I mean, 10 imperials like, yeah also we you know we talked about yeah yeah the leg is useful it's good especially for an archer you can't really shoot from the ground but getting an archer in the arm feels insulting like it feels like an extra level of like haha got you <laughs> like now you now now you're really screwed <laughs> i can hit you in the arm uh, so that was a, a crowned moment for me but we were yeah firing back and forwards and we were both i think we had just turned to look at each other or we were turning to look at each other in the moment yeah this is the elf off. <laughs> oh god it was incredible the two of us are standing really right next to each other and we turned to look at each other. I think we turned to like, I don't know, clap on the shoulder or something. Yeah, we were, we were like, victories we were ours. We shot a couple, yeah. like, yeah, we've won. That was over. Yeah, and as we were like maybe half a metre away, an arrow whizzes perfectly between our faces. Yeah, but and like we nose were, Yeah, we were definitely again. already looking at each other because we were smiling at each other and then we both just went <gasps> with big wide <laughs> eyes at each other of like, oh, and just sort of stood there for a half a second of like, Oh my god, that was oh, really shit. close. Yeah. Like, oh, that could have been real bad. Uh, yeah, which was just beautiful. And you know, pure fortune nice. one of us just wasn't down to that because neither of us hung like, heavy yeah. armor. So yeah, you yeah. shot to like it, it, it also, or the I, neck. I think it dead. was aimed at probably shoulder, but it would have hit us in the head at the height it was at. So yeah. that would have been, you know, it's only one hit if it hits It is technically, but it's but, actually uh, head, you know, we'd have chopped a head. Like, it's exactly, an arrow to the know? brainstem. It's fun. <laughs> Yeah. But um, yeah. So that was that was really right near the end. I'm mm. um, just checking that I haven't got anything else. Yeah, I got some great shots. I just had some really good shots. And of course, when other, the best thing about archery is that when uh, firing is great, when people are firing back at you, you can mm. reload your arrows. So it's advantageous to both sides to keep shooting. It's a very mutual thing. It's it's sort yeah, of almost, a, almost an OC thing. Yeah. Yeah, because you you want to keep firing. You want that's their arrows. Fun. You want their <laughs> arrows. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I, oh, I kept getting got in the leg all the time. Mm. I was getting uh, lots of just saying lots of just arrows saying. to the legs, impales and legs. Yeah, but 
hitting from the floor. I have a, I have a backup weapon. I'd just stab anyone who came near. It was fine. <laughs> and of course, as an archer, it's not like you're miles away from anyone. So I just kept getting got up again. Uh, mm. And it was, it was amazing. I've got something that says Lindy's chest shot. And I think that was possibly when you got hit in the chest. Yeah. Yep, um, directly in the chest. Or was this not more or less right after it having just you just got up from something? I feel like you'd think... you'd gone down for something stupid. Oh, do you remember we were right in the middle of having up. a quiet chat with the like the, we saw the dread shields and like oh black scars running off again and I was like Rook, yeah. there's two of us. There's yeah. a whole unit. Do something. Yeah. Um, yeah. For the record, unbiased opinion, the dread shields definitely ran as well. Just saying. Yes. It's a, <laughs> yeah. Oh my definitely, god. Definitely, definitely unbiased and definitely true. Yeah. But... I do, I do remember though that you definitely ran towards something and just immediately got pegged in the chest, and it was. Yeah, hilarious. I think I, I'd been clattered, got up, and then I was like, "Let's go, eyes." Thunk. Yeah. <laughs> just lying on the floor, absolutely, like absolutely, absolutely. I'm pretty sure it was the apex predator. I'm almost certain. Oh, almost certain. Almost certain. It, yeah. it would be deserved. Oh yeah. Also, there was that point where we were scrambling around. Uh, and there were people on the <laughs> other side in the forest, and we were yeah. trying to figure out are they druge or not druge? Because you know yeah. there were people. There were sometimes it's hard to tell when there's people yeah. without. There was masks. like a tree in the way. The unit just showed up yeah. from the direction of the druge. So we well. kind of went over, and it was fine. But one of them grabbed us and was like, "Oh, though they were called out to us first, like you druge, you druge." We were like, "No, no, we're, no, not, we're not druge. We're, we're Navar." And that's exactly right. what a Druze would say. Yeah, so it's they true. shoot it's us. True. <laughs> they, were, they, they were. They were definitely aiming. Uh, and said, yeah, just wanted to let you know, you know I'm shot you because you look very druzy. And I was like, I'm not offended. I did the same. <laughs> I yeah. shot you because I thought I you looked very druzy. They one round at us, actually. I was like, what the hell are you doing? Oh, no, no. They said that they had shot at us earlier. Oh. Yeah. Because I think they also said that we'd shot at them earlier, which is very possible because it's hard to tell. But as we pointed out it's, in the it's, moment, it's it dawn. wasn't personal. <laughs> like shooting Dornish Knights is just testing their Yeah, own. Yeah, exactly. But no, it, it was a good time. And then, of course, right at the end, so everyone was pulling back through the gate. And then most people were already through, start like going through the gate. I think there were still people near the fort area. Mm. And, this is uh, the gate onto the grassy field. Mid-gate. Yeah, we don't. We chased up towards where the, the reinforcements were coming from already. Mm. So I started to peel back because Chris turned to me and said, "I've got an idea," <laughs> and I was like, "I reckon plan. you could do it. I reckon you could." So I started pulling back slow, a little bit slow, and I can't remember who said it to me. I think it was a. I think it was a character who said something like, "You know, we need to go. We need to go." And I was like, "No, no, no, no. I need to watch this." They don't know. Like someone came over. And was like he. You know, he needs to pull back. And I was like, no, they don't know he's there. I've got to wait and see. And they're like, oh, okay. Because what were you doing? So, um, I like Ghost Recon. Oh, actually, no, that's not true. I've never played Ghost Recon. I really like Armor Three. And the number one rule to not get spotted is to lie down and crawl somewhere. Um, so I did that. I mm-hmm. lay down. I so I, I think I can't wield off into a bush. And if you want to see something like that go and watch Dilarp Noob's Christmas special yeah <laughs> on YouTube you will see yep, a yep. classic Chris combat Patented role did Chris combat role <laughs> yeah and um I start crawling up maybe about in in the bracket about 20 mm-hmm. meters or so um to get a flank on Apex Predator because he sat there chatting with ref and I'm like oh, I'm not like I'm not going to risk it shooting a ref is just asking for trouble mm. so I'm sat there I, and d- I, I can see oh, you I shot another I ref see... again did you oh yeah it, it happens. It right? happens. It happens a lot. Yeah. I'm sorry. Civilians are legitimate targets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, I remember seeing you, and I think it was the Wood Elf, to be honest. Um, Could have been. Could have been. Yeah. And he was just st- stood there looking nervous, and Apex Predators clearly having an OC chat with the ref. And then he's like, right. right. And he, he starts coming towards you lot. And this is the moment I've Yeah, been you had before. to run. I, I, well, was it? Because I remember from where I was looking, it looked like him suddenly moving actually meant you weren't quite in the position you wanted to he was he was stood still but quite far away but at mm. that point i'd have to just crawl into the glade and he would see me i was waiting mm. for him to come 90 degrees mm. to my position so i could just hit him like in the side of the knee or anything but mm-hmm. wasn't fully chained up because he had a chain skirt on 
Greaves chain um chain chain shirt, and then it 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 must have only taken about a minute or two, but it felt like sixteen hours because the adrenaline. I could see all the, you lot are rightfully pulling back and taking steps back, mm. and he's like, "Oh, all right, they're pulling back. Let's send them a few shots their way." Their way. Yeah, because Druge, they don't wait for you to retreat kindly. They will have your Franks, so they were going to pull forward again. <laughs> Absolutely. And at this point, Lindy Thornhart, champion of vigilance, bursts from the undergrowth and um, takes a pot shot at the apex predator. The apex predator turns just in time for the chainmail around their kneecap to block it. Mm. And I was like, "Fuck!" Mm. <laughs> and the loudest and fuck I could yell, and then I ran, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, like um, I don't know if you ever seen a rabbit run into hedges. It's like bang, mm. straight in. <laughs> Gone. Yeah. Pew. Running back to yeah. you, lot, and I'm like, he, because I knew he was loading, and I knew he was oh, aiming yeah. at me. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, he it didn't was, hit me, luckily, really but yeah. that was that was very much luck rather than any skill that I have. Yeah. But yeah, it we nearly excellent. nearly gone. Oh, it was just so funny, you know. Yeah. It was. <sighs> it was just so much good moments. Mm. Every single minute oh. of that fight was good. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Oh my god. Yeah, that rounds up the battle mm. for me. Um, anything else from your side? I don't think so. No, no, I think that was pretty much it. Oh, yeah, I it's, we head into Saturday afternoon as things get real sad. Oh god, real spicy, real sad. Really intense. Oof. Oof. 